and welcome to the Ridgecrest United Churches Worship for Holy Thursday in this year of the Lord, 2020. Tonight, beside in prayer, and so I am in moments of bread. Mother Lord. In prayer. O God of love, we Jesus shared tonight with his disciples, and tonight you share between the public parade of Palm Sunday. intimate hour. And though we fully understand, we long to follow his example, to serve and serve, to love and be loved. Jesus us to know these things and do them, we will be blessed. Help us then to know and still come seeking a blessing. For this much we do know, we cannot live unless bless us. Amen. Please join me in singing, Guide me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Our scriptures tonight come from the books of Exodus and the Gospel of John. Reading from the 16th chapter of Exodus, verses 4 and 5, and verses 13 to 21. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. And on the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted there on the surface of the wilderness, was a fine, flaky substance, 
as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it as each of you needs, and Omar to a person according to the number of persons, all providing for those in their own tents. Israelites did so, some gathering more. Those who had over and those who gathered little had no shortage, for they gathered as much as each of them needed. And Moses said to them, Let no one leave any of it over until morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it until morning, and it bred worms and became foul. And Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning they gathered it as much as each needed. The sun grew hot, it melted. And from the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter, 27, the words of Jesus. For the parishes, for it, what must God? So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the in the wilderness and from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of the world is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the word of God for the people of God. Do you have enough of what you need? Before answering that question, you must think, what is it you need? Do you need soap? Do you have enough? Enough hand sanitizer, enough Clorox wipes, enough food, enough water, and here is the biggie, enough toilet paper? If I am one person and I have 10 cases of 12-pack toilet paper, then the answer is, I do not need any more toilet paper, at least not right now. And if I'm part of a family of six, and there is no food in the refrigerator or the cupboard, then the answer is, I need food to feed my family and keep from starving, and I need it now. If I'm a child between the ages of 16 and the school buildings have been closed for the rest of the year, but education has shifted to online teaching, then the answer is, I need internet access and some device to read and do my homework on. If I am an 85-year-old widow living alone who no longer drives and uses, and who uses oxygen tanks at home to supplement my breathing, then the answer is, I need someone else to get my groceries, my prescriptions, my supplies. In times of hardship, scarcity, and economic recession, they all force us to think the issue of what is it I need versus what is it I want. Is it an essential item or is it a luxury? For the people of Israel, wandering in the wilderness, they are living free. They are no longer slaves. 
But year in and year out in a desert environment, they struggled with what they needed versus what they wanted. Certainly food and water was needed. A nice roof over their heads, like they had back in Egypt, was really what they wanted. But that came with a price, slavery, so they must accept and adjust to their new reality. They have freedom, and they have the promise of a land which lies ahead. But for now, it's a time of testing and challenge of hardship. They are hungry and worried about starving. But in that state, they find that God provides. Not in the usual manner that humans get food. Not from hunting or harvesting. They receive the bread of heaven. Not only is it the food for survival, it is God's test for faithfulness. Will you trust me, God asks of us. Will you trust me that I will provide enough for you? This service of Holy Thursday is rooted in the gospel accounts of this night when Jesus gathered with his twelve disciples in the upper room. They were celebrating the Jewish feast of the Passover. And as part of the Passover feast, there is a portion in that celebration in which the almighty deeds of God in delivering the Israelites from slavery and leading them through the wilderness to the promised land is recounted. And after each episode in this recounting, there is a word, dainu, meaning it would have been enough. Enough. Just one of these incidences would have been enough. If you look at Psalm 78 or 105 or 106, you can read a similar historical recollection. How God provided it was enough. It is enough. Jesus instructed us, his followers, to do this in remembrance of me. So tonight we do. But we also remember God's provision with bread from centuries earlier. Collect what you need and don't hoard it. Share what you collect so that all have. And so tonight... In this particular year, in the times that we're going through now, let us say, I collect what I need and I winnow out the wants. I take what I have and I share. I share because someone shared with me. The one who said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The one who said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. I have been nourished. I have enough. I have enough for me and enough to share. That is communion. Church building, or whether it is across the internet, it is enough. Communion is not just the Eucharistic element, but it is also the connection that we have with Christ and other Christians. Church and the Eucharistic meal of communion have never been theologically and historically solitary matters. Church is not one person. Stop there. It is a group and community. The communion elements are meant to be shared Christ shares them with us, and we share them with others. We pass it on. So wherever two or three are gathered in Christ's name, he is there, and that makes church. In today's world, affected by the coronavirus pandemic and the shutting down of large gatherings in private and public places, so that we may stop the sharing of germs, our sense of community and our sense of communion are distorted, interrupted, and reconfigured. But there is a power greater than this social and physical distancing. It is God's power revealed in the mighty deeds of the Creator God 
revealed in the presence of a God Son, Jesus, and in the power of a Spirit God, the Holy Spirit. So every time we gather for worship, whether it is at a church building in a specific town, or whether it is across an online medium of communication, it is church and it is communion. I cannot physically hug you or shake your hand in greeting this night, which is a good thing considering what we're trying to stop, germs, a dangerous germ in particular. But it doesn't mean that we still can't greet and see and speak and communicate our intentions. And I trust it is enough. Tonight is Holy Thursday. After the meal that Jesus had with his disciples, they went to the Garden of Gethsemane. It was there that Jesus prayed, and then he was arrested. What followed over the next several hours was his torture, his suffering, and eventually his death on the cross. What the disciples did not know at the time But what they came to understand, just as we today understand, is that Jesus' action, his giving in that moment in time, it was enough. We remember that tonight, as we share this meal, that Jesus is enough. Bow with me in prayer. Holy Christ, we thank you for your communion with us across ways that are mysterious at times, but ways that still have a power that you will share with us in this gathering this night for all your people connected with this church and connected in ways that are beyond our understanding. Thank you. Amen.
I invite you to lay out your bread and your juice or wine as we enter into this time to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. I also invite you, if you received the order of worship and you have that before you, to follow along at the appropriate time. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another, praying together, God of grace and God of glory, we are more of a people of forgetfulness than a people of remembrance. You have freed us from the bondage of sin and death, yet we continue to live enslaved to fear and want. You have called us to be your servants, yet we hoard and seek our own gain and put ourselves first. Forgive us, O God. Guide us in the ways of your Son, the Christ, that we lean into love and grace as his disciples. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. We remember that it is a good and joyful thing to be supplied by a loving God. Throughout history, the God of our ancestors has answered our need, fed us with manna in the wilderness, and given us grapes as evidence of the promised land. And we give you eternal thanks, Creator God. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The one who comes is your Son, Jesus the Christ, who on this night long ago began the process of redemption and delivering us from sin and death. Gathered with his disciples, his closest friends, he supped and dined with them and transformed the Passover meal into a sacrament of grace. Christ took bread and gave thanks to you, Almighty Father God. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup. He again offered thanks to you, Almighty Father God, and shared the cup with his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so it is in remembrance of God's mighty deeds in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves to be holy and living sacrifices with him proclaiming the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Consecrate, therefore, by your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and cup on this table and in the homes and locations of those joining with this worship service online at this moment. Bless them as we partake that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In your homes and locations, 
please take your bread and break it. If there are others with you, share the bread until all have received. And once taking the bread, I invite you to partake, saying the words, the body of Christ. And now take your cup of grape juice or wine, drink of it, sharing it with others, the cup of Christ or the blood of Christ. And now this prayer following communion. We thank you, O God, for giving us a place at your table, for serving us the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Amen. Go forth this night in the strength of Christ who suffered for us. Amen. <laughs>